You're listening to the RV Transport Podcast. I'm Tom, the driver. And I'm Bunny, the sandwich maker. And we invite you to join us on our journey in the industry of RV transporting, tow away, and drive away. So make sure you subscribe to our podcast and also towawaycouple.com where you can see our videos and other resources on RV transport. So enjoy the show. Welcome to our show, the RV Transport Podcast. The first one? The very, very first one. So just to give you, we we wanted to do an introductory of ourselves. I'm Tom, the driver. And I'm Bunny, the sandwich maker. And we started in the RV Transport industry a little over two years ago. That we did. So we've, we've been doing YouTube videos for over two years now. So it's been quite uh, quite the challenge within this industry in the past two years. It has been. It has been. We've had a lot of good times, bad times, ups, downs, and everything in between. Slowdowns and park shortages and everything. Yes, and from changing from sandwich maker to driver to tow away driver, <laughs> it's been interesting. It has been interesting. So we figured we got a lot of requests to do podcasts versus videos because our videos are more dedicated to um, how we navigated through getting the license plates for our truck to getting commercial insurance to signing on with companies right and a lot of people have uh, expressed interest in the way that we just ramble yeah so a lot of our videos we try to keep it eight to ten minutes and we even say it on our videos we don't want to just talk to talk and we get a but we get a lot of messages saying we love hearing you talk <laughs> so now you can just listen to us in the truck as you're driving that's what i was thinking <laughs> so the um podcast this is our very first podcast we're setting everything up right now and we have to have a podcast to get started. <laughs> to get started. Can you imagine? You got to have a podcast to get started doing podcasting. I know, kind of crazy, but <laughs> hey, here we are. So we're just going to hear us ramble on how we started and why we started an RV transport. Right now, a little bit of our background. Okay. We, we have. I've been basically. I started off as a mechanic. Yes. So when I see a lot of stuff online, I usually don't interject. <laughs> no. I don't want to get into arguments. No, no. It's, yeah. a, it's a lot easier that way. Yes. I have a degree in automotive di- automotive and diesel and automatic transmissions, mm-hmm. although I am no longer a mechanic, nor have I been a mechanic in years. My background has been uh, IT, uh, server administration, as well as backups, restores, and stuff like that. But then I've also gotten into graphic design and... A lot of different things. So So you're a techie geek. I'm a techie geek. (laughs) I mean, I could diagnose a car like no tomorrow. I just don't want to work on the thing. No, you just don't want to get your hands dirty. I don't want to get my hands dirty. (laughs) (laughs) And, of course, um, we have two residences. We have one in Alabama and we have one in Indiana. Yes. And Alabama is just too darn hot to work on a vehicle. Yeah, so is Indiana as far as I'm concerned. (laughs) As far as you're concerned. It could be dead of winter. It's still (laughs) Still too darn hot hot to work on a vehicle. I'd rather pay somebody to work on my car. Right, and that's why we both do it, so we can afford to do that luxury of having somebody else work on our truck. Now, me and Bunny, we worked regular jobs, and we were in the travel industry when COVID hit. Mm -hmm. And when COVID hit... We were going to basically lose our truck. Yes. When COVID hit, I was on quite the roll, and I figured I was going to make about 50000 a year myself working from home. Part-time. Part-time. Just not even part-time. Quarter-time. Right. <laughs> and then COVID hit, and that kicked the knees right out from underneath me, and I made $1,200 that year. Yeah. Bunny Bunny is a travel agent, and I do social media, which is my background, uh, social media marketing, promotions, as well as websites for the company we work for. Yes. So we we're sitting at home. Collecting what little unemployment we can get. 
And stimulus. And stimulus. Which wasn't much considering what our... I mean, we didn't have that many bills, though. Well, we... Because we were 1099, we... You shouldn't really even qualify for unemployment, but because it was a federal emergency, they enacted that so we could qualify for stimulus. Well, to get the stimulus, you had to be on unemployment. The state of Alabama gave us $100 a month. Or a hundred a week? Or a hundred a week. A hundred a week. Four hundred a month. Yes. That which was the bare minimum to allow us to get the stimulus. Get the federal stimulus. So yeah, when that started running out, I, I started looking at Bunny. I'm like, because we're remember, it was two weeks to flatten the curve. Flatten the curve and everyone was gonna go back to work and life was gonna return to normal. Yeah. So with that said we, we kind of waited, and our company actually furloughed us because nobody was traveling. No. <laughs> no. Matter of fact, people were canceling getting their money back. As a matter of fact, we were in Jamaica as COVID was hitting, and we were, the la- we were one week away from being the absolute last ones in Jamaica before they shut the borders. Right. I mean, we flew home. Um, just on a side note, we'll go back to... The COVID, we're sitting in Jamaica, and people were talking about people fighting over toilet paper and the toilet paper shortage. And we we were there for about 17 days, mm-hmm. and we couldn't phantom what people were talking about. Because when you're in Jamaica, you don't get the news. No, you just barely... And, and you're on vacation. You're not wanting to turn on the news. Well, even when you do, they have the news like the weather and yeah, some news, but, but they try to keep it powder puff. But our daughter was keeping us surprised of the situation. I'm, I'm like, are y'all going crazy there or something? Yeah, our daughter worked at Walmart. She was explaining how they are rationing toilet paper <laughs> and the lines that went through the whole entire Walmart. Mm-hmm. And she couldn't even buy toilet paper because she worked there. So yeah. they wouldn't sell it to the employees. So um, after we get home and everything, we find out how bad it is, the two weeks to flatten the curve. Two months later, three months later, three months later, we started losing our stimulus. Yes. And at that point, we started getting worried. We, were, we didn't know what we were going to do. Our house was paid for. But we still had utilities to pay for. Still we had still utilities? had food. We mm-hmm. still had insurance. And for uh, all of you out there that have newer trucks, you know that that truck payment is not a little one. No. It's a, <laughs> I mean, our other truck is uh, about 900 a month. The new truck is uh, 1200 Almost 1200 Yeah. So, but, um, so yeah, we, we sat down and talked. And I was talking to Bunny. And I said, we're going to lose the truck. Mm-hmm. There is no way we're going to keep it. So one of three things had to happen. One was it was going to get repossessed. Yeah, that and wasn't And that would happen. have just devastated our credit. Yes, and we are stuck in this little itty bitty tiny little town in Alabama with absolutely nothing to do, nowhere to get jobs. And no, no, no one was working. No one was working. And if we had the truck repossessed, then there would shoot our credit for anything in the future. So the other option was we could turn in the truck, but then that's the same as a repossession, basically. We'd be giving it away. Mm-hmm. And at the time, my truck had 40,000 miles on it. Um, if you go to towawaycouple.com, we have pictures of both of our trucks. The truck would have been... An instant sell for any oh absolutely company at uh, sixty seventy thousand mm-hmm. dollars and so I was telling Bunny I said well you know what if I'm gonna lose the truck I'm gonna have to turn it in or it's gonna get repossessed something's gonna happen I'm just gonna burn the miles up on it I don't care I will drive the tires off of it I will drive it in the ground before I ruin my credit and I'll let the truck earn its own payment right and in two years i don't know how many tires we burn the rubber off of <laughs> well first thing first bunny says well what do you plan on doing i said i don't know no i don't know we're gonna have to research this so i i started researching it just like you guys probably if you're not into rv transport and you're looking into it we started looking into different ways we can make money on the truck and rv transport started popping up on any of my searches so i started 
tell him, buddy, I'm like, you know, I'm going to call the manufacturers like Jayco and Grand Design. They have to be able to get that trailer from their plant to the dealership. And it's not, most of those are too big to go on a flatbed or multi-haul. Right. Because you know when you're really not looking for it, I mean, yeah, you see these RVs flying down the road all the time, but you're not paying attention. You don't know what you're looking for. Now we do. Now we do. Now I can spot one coming a mile away. Right. People are always like, how can you spot an RV transporter when they're flying the opposite way at 80 miles an hour? <laughs> Trust us. We know you. <laughs> Even right. when you're not running your DOT numbers, we know you. <laughs> But anyway, with that said, I started looking into the manufacturers. I was just getting ready to start calling the manufacturers when up popped an ad from my searches, I guess, uh, Horizon. Uh huh. So I started looking at Horizon, and the one thing that caught my eye, to be honest, was the fuel discounts. Right, because we have our own personal 40-foot fifth wheel, and we know how expensive it is and to pull that thing and how much fuel you go through. Exactly. So when I started looking at that, then I started realizing, hey, they're not the only company, even though they've been in <laughs> a, their ad, say, 35, at the time, said 35 years in business. Yeah. So I'm like, 35 years? They can't be the only one. It's like a gas station. There's got to be one on every corner. So the more I started researching, the more I found. And I stopped my search at five. Right. And there's way more than that. That there is just where I stopped looking and decided to bite the bullet. Mm -hmm. And decided to, uh, you know what? We ought to pull that trigger and uh, start, try to do this now because there's no other option. So what I did was I found the... The, after five, I, I, I came across, Horizon was the first one. Uh -huh. I came across Bennett, Indiana Transport. Oh, and then it was four. Indiana Transport and Synergy. Correct. Oh, wait. Yeah, I didn't even know about Wave. Someone asked me about Wave, and I had never even heard about no, it. No, we had So at the time, it was those four that I was looking at. And so then I'm like, all right, now that I know the four that I'm going to apply at, I need more information. It's like going to the final exam test with no knowledge of what's going but to be on the final exam. Two and a half years ago, trying to find any information was like pulling teeth. Yeah, you so I, find I, it. I Googled everything. I looked on YouTube. There was only one person on YouTube. Well, there's a couple of others. And they were very disgruntled and had gotten out of RV transport by the time I found their YouTube. But I went back in their YouTube and found some of their videos. And they were helpful all the way up until they got disgruntled and quit. <laughs> but, you know, we always <laughs> we always look at life as just because somebody else is upset with what they're doing or what's going on doesn't mean that we can't, can't or shouldn't give it a try. Well, you know what? It's not fun. It's not for everybody, that's for sure. It, it isn't for everybody. And here's the thing. You could choose to be a leader or you could be a follower. We choose to be a leader. We can make our own decisions for ourselves and our own base our own opinions. So with that, we came across a YouTube channel called That Nomadic Couple. Yep. Now, they're no longer doing it either. Uh, but they were their channel was probably the most helpful uh -huh. of all the channels. And I actually reached out to them. I tried getting them to call, or us to call them, them call us, and they never did. It had to be done through email. So it was a little bit pulling teeth because obviously they're transporting. And when I'm asking a question, I'm going to ask five more right after that. <laughs> yeah. And they're transporting. They can't just pull over. And... Um, Maybe they thought you were weird that you they wanted their phone I was number. A creepy dude. <laughs> I am a creepy dude. What are you talking about? You married me, you know. I know. <laughs> Couldn't get creepier. So, <laughs> so I, 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 I got a lot of my questions answered, and then it came to contacting the transport companies. Yes. So I, I, I contacted all four immediately out of the gate, and because we have a short bed truck. I immediately got a denial from Bennett. 
and they said due to the short bed truck they actually called me they were really nice about it and they said uh because you have a short bed truck and we've had a rash of people um uh, turning into their end caps of the or the front caps of the fifth wheel into their uh, back window. They didn't care about the truck or the back window so much as they did that front cap. Right, and it, it didn't even matter to them that we had a automatic slider. Our years and years of polling experience as well as my own 40-foot fifth wheel. Right. That had no bearing because um, we'll go into that later about the mindset of a lot of the companies, which is no problem. It's, it, it is what it is. Hey, it's their insurance, not ours. <laughs> right. So I, I, uh, immediately got a call from Horizon mm -hmm. and they wanted me and I got an email back from Indiana Transport and I got a call back from synergy correct but indiana transport we couldn't get a hold of uh, on the phone when we had other questions yeah so we had a lot of questions so um horizon and synergy being that we can actually get a hold of them i called them oh it must have been 30 times and asked questions and while they did their best to answer sometimes they didn't have an answer which was perfectly fine, but at the time, two and a half years ago, I couldn't get a hold of Indiana Transport, and since it was all through email, I'm more of a people person. Right. <clears throat> we definitely like to be able to pick up the phone and hear a voice at the end of those answers. Exactly. So I, I, I wrote off Indiana Transport right out of the gate. So now it was between Horizon and... Well, I didn't write them out of the gate. I, no. I still emailed them back and forth because I, I still needed information. Well, that and <laughs> we um, were also talking to somebody else that does, um, at the time, did... Um, Hall and Tow. Hall and Tow for Indiana Transport. Right. So I did keep them on my possibility list. Even though... The, so three acceptance. Yes. And so... When it boiled down to who I chose was just simple mathematics. Mathematics. I contacted Indy or contacted Synergy first, and I said, if I were hired on and I was dispatching, how many? I, I didn't ask how many drivers they had, and I probably should have asked that first. That would be an important question that, now. I think that people should ask. Yeah, you should ask how many drivers they have because that also yeah, has a bearing. It does have a big bearing. So I asked, how many trailers did they have right that minute to dispatch? Whether other ones were whether other ones were already dispatched or future ones were coming in, how many right that very second? Synergy says very pridefully they had 230 trailers. Gosh, I wish we had that now. <laughs> so we're on a slowdown right now. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I was impressed. Yes. So I reached out to Indiana Transport and I said, how many trailers do you have right now that you can dispatch? And they came back with like 365. Immediately that wrote Synergy out the, <laughs> off the list. I, I mean, when someone has almost twice as many trailers. Yes. But I didn't know they had four times many drivers or six times <laughs> many drivers. More than that. <laughs> And then I reached out to Horizon and I said, hey, how many trailers do you have? And the dispatcher, or not the dispatcher, the recruiter, and I was assuming that they're sitting right across from the dispatchers or they could have walked over, they could have gotten the information, but I was told that they didn't have access to that information and left me in limbo. And I didn't, I didn't like that, but I reached out to that couple that did the YouTube videos and... I guess I could have reached out to the Hall and Tow couple, but they did Hall and Tow. Yeah, they have a different load board. Different load board. So I uh, reached out to the couple and I said, how many trailers can you dispatch right now on your load board? And he goes, hold on, let me take a look. He pops back, 890. And I said, that's the company I'm going with. So we signed up with Horizon and... We drove for Horizon for about a year. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> yep. Yeah, and we had absolutely no issues. We have no issues no with issues any of them. No issues with any of them. Absolutely not. I mean, there are people that have hard-ons for companies, and they will do everything they can to put those companies on blast. Me, I look at it this way. If you have an issue with the company, that's fine. It doesn't mean someone else is going to have the issue, and there's no reason to project that issue onto other people. Because a company does something you don't like, the other people might be forgiving and say, doesn't bother me. Exactly. And, and I mean, and it's all in the way that somebody handles the situation, too. Right. So, so tip, typically what I, happened was I was, every time I dispatched, now you're responsible. You got to put up a bond, $1,500 bond, and they do 10% of each load. Until you get to your fifteen hundred. So if you do a load that's three thousand dollars, they're going to take away three hundred towards your fifteen hundred dollar bond. Mm -hmm. And then once you reach your bond, if you have any damage whatsoever, they take it out of that bond because yes. that bond is supposed to be the amount of the deductible for the insurance. So if they could fix it for under fifteen hundred, it would be whatever. They could fix it for. Yes. Or if it's over fifteen hundred, your max was supposed was, to be fifteen hundred. Uh, fortunately, we haven't had to run into that situation. Right, right. <laughs> but Horizon had a policy of you were responsible the minute the taillights hit the fence. And I yes. didn't mean hit the fence, pass the fence. But I mean, that included any rock things on the front of the trailer. And here we are, and we've got. Uh, 20 inch tires, uh, all terrain all tires, terrain, and all these yards are gravel, rock. <laughs> gravel and rock. So we would pull out so incredibly slow, and then Tom would go move forward as I'm picking rocks out of the front of the tires with the screwdriver and the backs. Yes, just so we didn't get any rock dings. Right. We were also told that don't take the trailer out before you have to because let's just say it hails. You're responsible for hail damage. Mm -hmm. And you, you shouldn't drive between certain hours during certain times of the month because deer season, if an animal strikes it, you're responsible. And I kept telling Bunny, I'm like, you know, the money's great. The trailers were there. We were constantly triple, quadruple dispatched at all times. Yes. When we had one trailer behind us, we had two, three, four on our... Waiting dispatch, when we came waiting back. for us to come back. That's how many trailers they had. And I was just a basket case because about 45 minutes from every drop off, my anxieties would start going out the roof of what is this dealership going to find that I didn't see. And I don't know if it was just because we were new or the dealers that we were going to, but those dealers seem to be more perfectionists than any of the other dealers i mean right. they were pinpointing and getting everything written down bunny is going to let bama in we have a new puppy if you watch our videos we did a video with bama <laughs> but yeah i started getting all these anxieties and i was stressing out and i loved doing the rv transport but that was the one thing i really didn't like and when as much as you do a pre-trip you get to a dealer and they're like, oh, there's scuffs on the ladder. I didn't go on the ladder. Doesn't matter. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, clearly, there's scuffs on the siding that you know is manufacturing, but they're going to blame it on the driver. Right. So I was just so stressed. And every time we would hit a truck stop and we we're talking to other drivers, you know, we drivers do talk. Yes, we do. And I would ask them questions. Or I would voice my concern about driver damage, stuff like that. And I always got back, what are you talking about? We don't have driver damage. I'm like, what do you mean? I keep getting told every time I'm dispatched, make sure you do your pre-trip. Make sure you take good pictures. Don't take it out before because God forbid if anything happens, I'm going to get dinged <laughs> for it. And, the, and now these are people that were not with Horizon. They were with the other companies. But I kept talking to Indiana transport drivers. Well, there's so many of them. Yeah, there's like 3,500 <laughs> of them. <laughs> I think when we were at Horizon, there was about 1,200. 
Yes. And when we left uh, Indiana, there was 3,400 drivers. Mm -hmm. So I started talking to them, and I was, I was telling them about rock dings. And they're like, we have certified mud flaps. And I'd seen at Dan's Hitch, the certified mud flaps. I just thought they had to be proved they had mud flaps. Right. And then they, I asked about hail damage, and they're like, act of God. And I'm like, well, what about animal strikes? They're like, act of God. So then I made that phone call, and I actually got a hold of somebody. You did. I got a hold of claims. They kept putting me to, through to claims. And I said, what about rock dings? They said, no, we have, if you have certified mud flaps, we will never charge you for rock dings. And I said, okay, what about hail? And they're like, well, that's a little tough because if you're driving through hail, how do we know? And I, and I, I agreed with them. And I, and I was talking to my friend and I said, yeah, they brought it up on hail. How do they know I didn't drive through it? And he goes, Tom, you got one of those cool, fancy dash cams with D GPS location, time, date, and miles per hour, and voice. He goes, so all you got to do is say, oh my God, I hear hail, and pull over. It'll show all of that exactly where you were. And I'm like, that's a great thing. I hear I have this dash cam, and I didn't even think about it. <laughs> no, but he, and you got to kind of understand. Um touch on hail i mean we have been driving in just a little bit of rain and then all of a sudden you're in this complete and utter downpour right and another time that if you're driving at night you can't see you it. can't see it you don't know that you you're going it, into it but you don't see it until you're there right so i called back and i was talking to claims over at indiana and i said hey what about this and they're like we'd accept that and i'm like really and i'm like all right what about animal strikes? So that went all the way up to the general manager. Yeah. And he comes down and gets on the phone with me. And I said, what about animal strikes? He goes, well, that's kind of a gray area because people could hit anything and claim it was an animal. He goes, we'd probably want to see fur, feathers, blood, something. And I said, well, I'll drag the damn carcass in there. <laughs> And he goes, we don't need the carcass, but a lot of pictures. And if we if we, we have validation that it was an animal strike, we're not going to charge our drivers for that. And I will say, Indiana really had their drivers' backs. Right. Now, some other drivers for Indiana would not agree with that statement. But, but it also helps that we documented everything before we took it out. So if there was anything that we questioned. And we had a great relationship with the mm -hmm. claims and everyone in there. We were nice to everyone. We never berated or belittled anyone. We, If they had it, they had it. If not, I mean, think of it this way. A lot of people get upset, and I understand, but it's you could choose to move on. Mm-hmm. Yep. And you know what? And it's like right now, like Tom said, we are in a slowdown. There's nothing we can do. It, we're all in the same boat. Right. So initially, we got into this just to get through COVID. the, um, the, <laughs> the COVID the flat and the, the slowdown. Curve. And the resort started opening up, what, about six months ago? Uh, fully, yes. Fully. Uh, airports were opened up. The mandates started disappearing. And we enjoy doing RV transport so much that we still work for the travel company. Mm -hmm. And our travel company fully is aware of us working, doing the RV transport. Matter of fact, when we bought our second truck, we got a call a little wary that we weren't going to do uh travel anymore and i said no no if we if you'll allow us we'll do both and they said absolutely we absolutely love the freedom that um well in good times we can pretty much go wherever we want right but even still we look at it as an experience so now when times are slow and they give us a call and they're going you're going i have this trailer going such and such location you're like you can take it or you cannot take it but you might as well take it and <laughs> That's our dog. <laughs> and learn different parts of the U.S. I mean, they're gonna think we're stupid. They're gonna go, oh "My God, they have a pigeon and they're calling it a dog." <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I absolutely love the cell. Cell. 
the Southern California runs. Oh, yeah. Our daughter's there. Um, my dad's Tom's there. Tom's dad is there. My brother's in New Mexico. Yes, yeah, so I love Your them. Your family's in Arizona, so we get to see family a lot. Yes, but that is the most boring drive. Done it so many times. Right. We do like to see other things. We're going to keep this video right at 30 minutes just as because we needed an intro video to start our podcast. This is not a video. Oh, well, yeah, we do YouTube videos. <laughs> this would be a podcast, babe. This is a podcast. It's uh, I'm tired. <laughs> you we are tired. So, all right. Check us out. Towwaycouple.com. We have resources as well as a lot of information on our website. Go to YouTube dot com forward slash tow away couple yes and follow us on instagram and twitter tow away couple definitely and uh definitely subscribe to our podcast so you get the newest and updated ramblings that we like to do yeah i think our, our, our future podcast will probably be I, I you let us know 30 minutes or one hour right right yeah. how much more you can take of it because we can talk. <laughs> I can talk. And you know what? We should be able to set up things, too, when we're in hotels or anything and make it a little bit... It's easier. Right. Than setting a full camera well, system and Well, and it's a lot easier to talk about the subject when it just happens. Right. Like our random ramblings. Yes. One thing you won't hear, I mean, you won't hear a lot of negativity. You will not hear anything negative towards any companies. No, no. I mean, we'll, I mean, we'll talk about our experiences and they might sound like a negative, but they're not a negative. We have the choice of moving on or staying. Mm -hmm. And when we move on, we move on with, we're still have a great relationship with everybody as far as we know. Well, I still drive for one. Yeah. Our dog's digging. <laughs> she's, she's still letting us know it's almost time for bed. Right. So, again, subscribe. And if you have any topics that you think we should do, please reach out to us. Towwaycouple.com. There is a contact us link. Yes. So, I think we should see them down the road. We'll see you down the road.